Good morning and welcome to First Church of Christ in Suffield. We are glad that you are worshiping with us today at home. Once again, we are all virtual worship as we make it through this COVID time. It is Silver Lake Sunday, Silver Lake Camp and Conference Center, where we celebrate the beginning of the beginning of summer camp. And that means that registration has just started for our young people to register for summer camp this summer. And so we welcome the Reverend Ryan Gackenheimer, who's the executive director of Silver Lake and are very excited for this, this coming summer camp, um, which is a little bit different, but getting back to normal um, for our campers. And it is always a fun time to celebrate Silver Lake. So friends, we have a, a annual meeting coming up, and so we hear the call to the annual meeting from Lisa Kucha, our clerk. We hear from her now. Call to the annual meeting to the officers and members of First Church of Christ, Suffield, Connecticut. Notice is hereby given of the annual meeting of the First Church of Christ Congregational, Suffield, Connecticut, to be held on Sunday, January 30th, 2022 via Zoom at 11 a.m. We will conclude with the lighting of candles of hope for the coming year. Dated at Suffield, Connecticut, January 7th, 2022, Lisa Kucha, Clerk of the Church. Now we'll hear from Jerry LaPlante, our budget person. Good morning. I would like to just take a minute to remind you of something that's very important that's in this week's witness and will also be available to you by email during the week. Um, in preparation for the annual meeting, um, we have put together a budget presentation um, from the asset management team and the church council. I would encourage you strongly to um, click on the link in the witness and review those materials in preparation for the annual meeting. Um, and equally as important, you'll have an opportunity through that link to also submit any questions that you might have about the budget. Um, we want you to think about things in advance, send some questions in to us according to the link so that we can research your questions and answer them in a thoughtful, researched way instead of an off-the-cuff way that we might do in an annual meeting. So check out the link in the witness, check out the questions, and prepare for the budget section of the annual meeting on January 30th. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry. Friends, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. If you believe a little or you believe a lot, you are welcome here. If you doubt a little or you doubt a lot, you are welcome here. Let us worship our God together. Please join us in the call to worship in the prayer of invocation. A young preacher once gathered on a grassy hillside and spoke the words, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. This may not be a hillside, but we gather to be with Jesus again. We look around and see a world longing for real peace. We open ourselves to be changed by the Prince of Peace. We might need to look at new places and people for the next steps toward peace. We will work for peace with all of God's children. We will search for answers from all over the world. Getting outside our doors, our towns, and our normal is uncomfortable. We search for, with Christ as our comforter. Today, we worship God who not only calls us to action, but also provides us space and opportunity to learn and grow as well as focus on our own relationship with God and Christ. Our voices join together in prayer and song as we praise the one radical enough to show us that peace is possible. Let our worship today spill out into our conference camps and retreats, into our homes, workplaces, and schools, and into a life rich with the hope for peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, for we shall be called children of God. Here is the prayer of invocation. Almighty God, giver of all life, 
Your creative hands have molded the dry land and gathered the waters into beautiful places for our young people to experience your glory, to build relationships, to find you. Your spirit moves in your church to inspire the lives of generations of children, youth, and adults with generous and tender love. Move, up, move in us as we seek to strengthen the ministries we share, that we may be empowered by your presence to draw all people to you. Keep us ever mindful of the gifts and opportunities before us for the formation of children and families, that when they ask to see Jesus, we, we might show them the way through the generous and creative camping ministries of our church and the Southern New England Conference family. Through Christ, who welcomes us to walk with him in unity with you through the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. come now to a time of prayer, knowing that God has already heard what is upon our hearts, and yet we come to share with one another our hopes, our dreams, our joys, our losses, and our griefs. And so in doing so, we can faithfully minister and nurture one another. So let us pray. Dear Lord, we give thanks for your beautiful creation, the green of your trees, the bright colors of the flowers, the owl's greetings at night, and the bird's early morning chirps. We savored the coolness of the breeze and the first jump into the lake. We wait for the fireflies to light up the sky and marvel at the stars above. We give thanks for food shared with friends, the picnic tables full of snacks and sandwiches, the prayers sung before meals, the laughter shared between bites, the quench of cold water, the watermelon juice that drips down our arms. We give thanks for friends, the ones who know when we're feeling lonely and offer their hand in friendship, the ones who make us laugh, and the ones who help us step out of our comfort zone. We give thanks for evening campfires, the dancing of light from the flames, arms wrapped around one another, swaying back and forth with the guitars, stories, 
songs and inspiration, and for the ending of the day, the promise of a star-filled sky. Be with us, God, in these moments of joy and learning. Open our hearts to see you in the faces of friends, the majesty of a setting sun, the silliness of our songs, and the stories that declare our love for you and for each other. Teach us to sing and to, and to dance and to rejoice, to listen and to be still. This is our prayer. Be with us now, be with us during the summer, be with us always. And we offer the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hebrew Scriptures, Nehemiah, Chapter 8. When the seventh month came, the people of Israel being settled in their towns, all the people gathered into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it, facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday, in the presence of the men and women and those who could understand, and all the ears of all the people who were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up, then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation. They gave the sense so that people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites, who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. 
for this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. A reading from the Christian scriptures, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he anointed me. To bring good news to the poor, he has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, and recover the sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. I bring greetings on behalf of the Southern New England Conference United Church of Christ and Silver Lake Camp and Retreat Center, your year-round outdoor ministry located in the beautiful hills of Northwest Connecticut. This image of Jesus returning to Galilee feels so familiar in so many ways. It reminds me of when I was so serving the local church and one of our beloved youth who had gone off to college and become a young adult and returned to deliver the sermon after a mission trip as one of the leaders or uh, coming back as a guest preacher on Youth Sunday or as they became a new deacon in the church when they had returned. There is a familiarity to that individual. We know them. We love them. Someone the community has known and loved for a long time. And at the same time, this is a person who is different. Not only someone who is older, but someone who is transformed. They have grown. They have experienced life. They've been in new communities. There is something new. It is also has a familiarity to my own childhood church for the first time after I returned after going to seminary. I had been at church virtually every Sunday for 18 years, for Sunday school, for worship, for bell choir, for youth group, and for so much more. And in between, graduated high school, went off to college, moved across the country for graduate school, moved a little bit closer for seminary, my parents still attended that same church, the one they grew up in. My sisters had both gone there. We had all grown up there. So there was this long and strong relationship with that wonderful community. They remembered me acolyting as a little kid, singing in the Christmas pageant, coming home from church camp in high school, and offering my first ever sermon. And here I was, sharing the good news, reading the sacred word, and offering a message of hope. I was both incredibly familiar to them and someone completely different. I had grown. I had another eight years of life. Basically in my entire twenties had gone by elsewhere. And something more had happened. I had discerned a call to ministry. I had been doing ministry. I had experienced God calling and I responded. 
I experienced God shaping me and changing me. So I looked pretty much the same on the outside, but my relationship with the Holy had evolved and changed and grown dramatically. And that could not be even more true for Jesus. It took a moment actually for the folks in the crowd to recognize him. They made the connection that this is Mary's boy. This is the little boy who followed the carpenter Joseph all over town. And while they know him and they know his family, he is different. I was a little different after going back after seminary because of the way God had moved in my life. But Jesus, Jesus, he was very different. He had the Spirit of God descend on him during his baptism. And a voice from heaven said, You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. One of the reasons I highlight how Jesus was familiar is the way God's meshes of hope persists no matter how things change and no matter whether they feel totally different or very similar. God's message of hope is consistent and persistent. The second reason for highlighting this going home and familiarity I will visit later in this morning's message. One of the beautiful things that happened at camp this summer was to watch hope come alive, or perhaps it was more of hope being reawakened. Either way you describe it, it was amazing to see campers find hope that they, there was a safe space to be with other, others, to be outside to make friends, to see old friends, to be in familiar places where they know they are loved, and to be reminded that they are loved. And to see that hope come back, that there is a place, even with the safety procedures that we had in place this summer, that they can be their whole self, that they can bring their true self and just be to be loved by God, to be loved by a community, and to know that there is love within themselves. A time to play, a time to simply laugh and run and craft and worship and even sing together. Yes, to even sing again in community. Sing those familiar camp songs that are, for so many of us, stir the emotions deep within our being. That is the kind of hope we saw this summer in our campers and in our staff and in our volunteers, especially in our volunteers, because we were not expecting to be able to have any volunteers this past summer. And by the end of the summer, a mighty volunteer crew had arrived at camp and really made the summer possible. Without them, it would not have been possible. In the midst of the hope, it was a difficult summer. Campers were tired. Staff were exhausted. Things were different. Things were new. We didn't have the core 200 plus volunteers that staff are used to having. So summer staff were serving in those roles traditionally filled by our volunteers. And yet, in the midst of all of that, there was hope. It was visible, it was audible, and it was tangible. This is God's time to shine. What a powerful phrasing we find in the message translation. If that isn't hope filled, I don't know what is. And that is not some future time in which we hope for a day when God will move in our midst. Nope. The scripture reminds us this is God's time now. Jesus, that young man who has returned to his hometown and fulfilled the scripture in his reading of the scripture, is declaring that in that moment that history is being made and this is God's time to shine. And that is just as true today. This today is God's time to shine. I said I had a second reason for looking back to the younger Jesus or children in our church who grew up or even my own return from seminary. And that is because of the way Jesus delivers this message in the message translation. He says, you've just heard scripture make history. It came true just now in this place. It's kind of like a little kid. You know, when they state something they believe to be so obvious that they can't imagine how you don't know it. 
when they state something that is actually really huge in a way that makes it suddenly seem so simple and so obvious. That's exactly what Jesus has just done. God's spirit was upon Jesus. He was chosen by God to preach the message of good news to the poor. He was sent to announce pardon to prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the burdened and battered free, to announce this is God's time to shine. That is literally the good news. That is our hope. Our hope that God does not leave us, that the burdened and battered are set free, I don't know about you, but there have definitely been times over the last two years where I felt burdened and and even battered at times. And to know that our God is one who cares about each of us so much and calls us by name and has empowered Jesus to set free all of us from our burden, that is hope, my friends. That is hope. And just as Jesus didn't arrive only for the people of his day, but for all of humanity, for all time, God's time to shine was not just in 30 of the common era. It was for all time. This is God's time to shine. And from our Hebrew scripture, Nehemiah tells the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. Go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord and do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. This day is holy, he reminds them, just as this day today is holy. It is fine to weep and mourn and it is good to do so, but we are called to not stay there. For God is our hope. In fact, God is our strength, the strength that allows us to journey through difficult times, the strength to have hope, the strength to care for those who do not have a portion prepared for them, for those who feel burdened and those who are battered. God is our strength for each of us. This is what sustains me. This is what gives me hope as we prepare for another with COVID in our midst. We will have safety procedures in place. We will have an isolation cabin. We will have rapid tests on site. We will have a plan in place that looks different than last summer because now we have vaccines. Thank God we have vaccines and boosters. And yet, I will begin meeting with our medical team in another week to develop ways to keep our campers, deans, counselors, chaplains, artisan residents, and all our volunteers along with our staff safe this summer. I pray that all these hours will be productive and create something that we will never, ever, ever use again. And all of that work is worthwhile. It is worthwhile because an experience at Silver Lake is life-changing. It touches you to the deepest core of your being. It can change the entire course of your life. Experiencing how much God loves all of you just the way you are is transformational. Camp did that for me, and it will happen over and over again this summer. We need your help to make sure that all of our young people can have this kind of life-giving and life-changing experience. We need you to find the kids at your church you have not seen for two years and get them to Silver Lake. We need to find your, you to find your neighbor children who do not come to your church and help them get to Silver Lake. We need you to connect with those grandkids who live far away and get them to Silver Lake. I say we need you to do this not because Silver Lake needs just your campers, but because the world needs you. An entire generation of children and youth have had their childhood and teen years upended. They have been isolated from one another, forced to learn from home, distanced from their friends and community, all done so that we can be safe. It was necessary and it was good. And here is the hope, your hope. You can make a difference for these young people. You can provide them with a soul-touching, heart-filling, life-changing experience of God's love. That is what you are offering, and that is why we, the collective we of the world, need your help in getting our young people to Silver Lake. 
This summer at Silver Lake, we are delighted to be returning to our more familiar format. We will have seven one week sessions, seven weeks of one week sessions, campers arriving on Sunday and returning home on Saturday. We are beyond delighted to welcome back our volunteer deans and counselors, including so many from your own church. Thank you for allowing your church leaders to be a part of Silver Lake, and thank you to all of you who are giving of your time, energy, joy, and hope. Along with our summer, we are also welcoming retreat groups. Silver Lake is not asleep. We are ready to welcome you. We have been welcoming family groups throughout this pandemic, which has been a wonderful addition to the Silver Lake ministry, and we are ready to welcome you, and we have room to receive your family group right now. We know that Omicron, for many churches and groups, has pushed a pause button. And we know we will move through this time, and there will be a time when COVID is more like the seasonal flu. Our retreat season is already beginning to fill. Like all of you, people are longing to be together, longing to be in community with one another, longing to explore faith in person, to have deep conversations on a walk or around a table. Silver Lake is your place for all of that. And I would invite you, in fact, I would challenge you to think about groups within your church and within your community that are outside the church that have never been to Silver Lake before and to consider a retreat with that group. We all know we need to reconnect. We need to be regrounded. We need to be rooted in our faith and in our communities. And Silver Lake is your place to do all of that and more. I really can't overstate how excited I am and how excited the entire Silver Lake community is to have our wonderful volunteers returning to camp this summer. It is going to be amazing. This alone brings me hope and knowing the tremendous impact on the lives of hundreds of young people warms me. It fuels me. It gives me hope. It makes me know that this day is holy and that this is God's time to shine. See you at the lake. to his first followers as he was preparing them for lives of ministry. And it is a blessing for each of us today. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. God has blessed you that you might bring hope to a world longing for peace. Go now but not away. Go now to find ways to reconnect with God and to bring people to the wholeness that comes in knowing Jesus the Christ. Amen.